Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Louise Hubar begins now. Good evening everyone. Tasmanians have gathered at churches across the state to celebrate Christmas Day. The coronavirus pandemic changing how the services were run and also impacting the messages that were shared with congregations. In a year like no other, the Christian community were given a small taste of normality this morning. Family and friends coming together at Hobart St David's Anglican Cathedral, with churches allowed to host 75% of capacity. The pandemic impacting how people worshipped, as parishioners were forced to book a pew. And it's wonderful to have them. Uh, we've been booking people in, giving away tickets uh, to make sure that we can fit the people in. The bishop turning to a Christmas classic in his message to the congregation. So I've been reflecting on the carol, uh, O Holy Night, which has a line about the weary world rejoices. A similar situation at Catholic churches, with social distancing prominently displayed. The congregation at Hobart St Mary's Cathedral remained in full voice. Millions of people around the world can't go to church this, uh, this Christmas because of lockdowns in different parts of the world. So we're very grateful here in Tasmania. In a year of separation, the Archbishop reflected on relationships. People have really realised how important relationships are. And uh, so the message, I think, for us is to prize those relationships. In the north, Launceston's Church of the Apostles reflected on the values of the Christmas story and how they were displayed in 2020. Jesus being born, humility and compassion, and we've seen uh, marvellous examples of that all through this year. Those unable to secure a spot were also catered for, with live streams allowing parishioners to tune in. Very fortunate here in Tasmania to still be able to meet together and uh, to be able to worship God on this important day. We've just been amazed at the number of people and people that we might not have expected to tap in who have done so. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. Guest numbers were scaled down, but there were certainly no limits to the hearty Christmas lunches being served today. Some Tasmanians were attending community feasts for the first time after what's been a tough year for many. If ever there was someone who understood the value of a community Christmas lunch, it's Heath Nash. The security guard's 2020 has been rocked by multiple injuries from his job, financial stress and on top of it all, the pandemic. If it wasn't for this festive feast, there would be no Christmas lunch for Heath and his four children. We as a family wouldn't know what to do if uh, you know, we couldn't come here today. It feels like everyone has had their share of trials this year, but perhaps none more than those attending the Albert Hall. The common theme, simply, thank God it's here. It's absolutely fantastic to see us drawn together, especially in an hour of need. Today was also Tanya Chick's first community lunch. Being new to Launceston, today was more about the social side of things. Very important. I don't know if been home much. She now considers these new friends as family. It means a lot for the children and everyone that they can have time with their families and that. But I don't get time to spend with my family now. 600 people would normally cram into the hall. Only a third of that were able to dine in today. In a year where carols and pageants were scrapped, a dose of Christmas like this had heightened meaning. I think just doing some of those traditional things that a lot of the people here are used to is really good for them. Some people would be sitting on their own at home. Now they're out with other people, they can talk and share with other people. The same could be said at Colony 47, green and red and plenty of food. The difference to other years, it was all to take away. There is a lot of um, lonely people in Hobart and I think this year in particular they've been hard hit so um, they've reached out to us and they really appreciate that, um, that community spirit. Over 700 people registered for a meal and that wasn't all they took home. Father Christmas made sure the day was complete. 
some children, it's their, their present for the day. So they haven't woken up this morning with a present under the tree. They're actually coming here to get Santa uh, a gift from Santa on the day. And let's not forget those who couldn't go home. The international students spending Christmas in Tasmania. Who would have seen this coming at the start of the year? As an international student, yeah, and being from Chicago, um, yeah, I'm missing family a bit, but also, like, I get to spend um, Christmas with, uh, like, yeah, all these um, people. And it's times like these when people matter the most. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. And after its Sydney Hobart dreams were dashed, Tasmanian Yacht Alive has officially entered the Launceston to Hobart instead. The Mini Maxi is considered a shoo-in to claim line honours, so the real target now is to break the race record. Making it to the start line of the Launceston to Hobart is as much an achievement in itself for the crew of Alive. We were allowed to come out of uh, lockdown, which was is lovely. After intending to race the Sydney Hobart, a grey area around quarantine had the crew holed up in isolation. Alive left Sydney before Tasmania introduced strict restrictions with the Harbour City, but arrived back home once they'd come into effect. With this quarantine dilemma now overcome, the focus is now on the local contest, which had been considered a backup as early as October. It wasn't as different as what you might think. So this, this plan was always running in the background. A former handicap winner of the Sydney Hobart is indeed unbackable odds to take out the Launceston to Hobart. The real question is whether Alive will beat the race record of one day, nine hours and 33 minutes set in 2009. Alive will try to do it with an all-Tasmanian crew. It'll be far different to the conditions faced in the Blue Water Classic. There's basically no shelter for a uh, vessel such as ours and, you know, if anything breaks, you're, uh, you've basically, uh, you wasted your time. So, uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's nice to be in this race anyway, I can tell you that. The Launceston to Hobart, along with the Melbourne to Devonport, set sail on Sunday. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. And we have a very special Friday flashback this week. You may remember last week we showed you some vision of Ricky Ponting testing out a video camera which Southern Cross Television had given him. We reported that we had no idea what it was all about. Well, newsroom veteran Andrew Smirks Shepherd had managed to find the tape deep in the archive. It turns out Ponting tried his hand as a reporter for our news back in 1995 when a Tasmanian team toured Zimbabwe. And tonight, we're running the story in its entirety. Enjoy. Just what we needed. A very different hot weather pre-season. There's a couple of lions sitting over there underneath the trees, sunning themselves ready for feed. Maybe Sean Young thought it was for real and a distraction. Seriously, the cricket was good. It's the best pre-season we've had. Unfortunately, Jared Denton was one of a number of us to be struck down by a virus, perhaps the result of a fitness exercise in canoes down one of the rivers. Young has always kept a smile on our faces. It's a race day today. We're going to Victoria Falls. A plane ride and a bus trip later, and a short walk stood between us and one of the world's great sites. Dr Livingston, mate. Dr Livingston? Really, really? That's what we're here for, that's what the boys have come to see. That's spectacular. Not a bad sight. We ventured down the Zambezi River, watched by hippos. Mark Atkinson was the bravest at the crocodile farm. They like being held at all, these. We went on a real safari. Oh, look at that. Taming of the wild beast. Tassie was a long way away. There was, of course, time for civilised golf. Here's my partner, the manager, Tony Harrison. Looking forward to a good day. Well, if I hit the ball, I'll be lucky. The trip was for cricket and that we got plenty of. We're now looking forward to doing Tassie Proud over the summer. Ricky Ponting reporting for Southern Cross News. If Ricky's still interested, Louise, I reckon we'd find a spot for him on our team somewhere. <laughs> How I good totally would that be? I totally agree. That was great. <laughs> Good evening and Merry Christmas. Launceston and Cressy shared the state's highest temperature, a top of 21. 18 in Hobart, Burnie and Devonport slightly cooler, both 17 degrees. Bushy Park and Friendly Beaches reached a warm 20 degrees, cooler in St Helens and Smithton at 17 and 14 degrees in Liawini. Clear skies about in the north of Tasmania, although high clouds did increase from late morning. A band of cloud across the top and of and northeast of the mainland, causing thunderstorms, while low-level cloud cover, covers the New South Wales coast. 
Tomorrow's chart shows a high over the Tasman Sea, a north to northeasterly flow over the state as a cold front passes south of the Bight. Light to moderate winds across the state with winds increasing in the southeast and east from late afternoon. Swells up to two and a half metres. A strong wind warning from St Helens Point south to, to South East Cape and a minor flood warning is still in place for the South Esk River. Tomorrow, a sunny 25 for your Boxing Day in Hobart, 24 in Maydena, cooler in Oatlands, 21 and partly cloudy. Launceston, partly cloudy and 23, Devonport, 19 and cloudy. A possible shower for Burnie, 19 and partly cloudy for Strawn and Marawar. A shower or two for St Helens, 20, partly cloudy for Swansea and 23 and sunny in Orford. UV at extreme with sunrise at 5.35 and sunset just before 9. Showers and a possible thunderstorm for Sunday in the north and northwest of the state. On Monday, showers about the west and far south clearing by late afternoon, mostly fine elsewhere. And on Tuesday, showers about the west and far south. 34 and sunny in Perth, the same in Adelaide, sunny and 27 in Melbourne, a late shower or two for Sydney, partly cloudy in Brisbane. And it's currently 18 and sunny in Hobart, Launceston 17, partly cloudy, Devonport 15 and mostly cloudy. And Lou, that's all in weather tonight. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Tom Johnson is in charge of my Christmas dinner, so if it burns, you might find a couple of extra guests knocking at your door. Well, as you know, Lizzie, our door is always open. I'm sure there's always more than enough pudding to go around. And that wraps up this Christmas evening bulletin. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. From myself and the team, we hope you have a very safe and happy evening. Good night.